This is an example of a DC node solutions problem in Circuit Tutor on level 3. Let's go into DC node solutions and we're going to do a hard problem. So as usual our first task is to select the reference node. Remember that we normally want that connected to as many things as possible and uh, to as many voltage sources as possible in particular. So the best choice here would actually be this upper right node because that's connected to four things as well as a voltage, including a voltage source. Um, however, to give a more interesting algebraic solution, I'm going to actually select it down here, which is three items, including a voltage source. Okay, so here are the instructions if you need those. And we are being given the KCL equations in this game, so what we need to do first is to write the voltage constraint equations and the SOT variable equations. So we have two voltage sources here in our nodal analysis, so that will require voltage constraint equations. So we select that. And given our choice of ground, uh, for the three volt source we're going to need a difference of voltages equals the voltage value. And we see that that will be V4 minus V1. fill those in and that's equal to 3 volts. Check that. And then for this 3 volt source um, I see that that's just going to be a single voltage equal to the value. So that will be V3 equal to 3 volts in this case. So that completes the voltage constraint equations and now I need to do a SOT variable equation for the power dissipated in the 7 ohm resistor. And for the choice of ground I've uh, selected, that's going to be a difference of voltages, so let's go to a SOT branch power. And remember that there are several sets of terms here that you can use depending on what you need. Um, in this case, I'm going to set the uh, dissipated power in 7 ohm equal to uh, just a difference in voltage divided by the resistance will be the straightforward thing here since it's just a resistor. So we'll have V4 minus V2 over the 7, uh, that quantity squared over 7 ohm. Of course the matter, uh, the order of V2 and V4 there doesn't matter, obviously since the quantity is squared. So we'll check that, and that is the correct uh, power equation. So now we're done writing equations, so we'll click no more equations. Remember that there, well, of course you already know the video help button. Um, now we need to combine the coefficients of each variable to make simplified standard form uh, equations for this, not including however the SOT variable equation. That's going to be used later, so this will be just for the voltage constraint equations and the KCL equations. So the first one just says V3 equals 3 volts, so that'll give us a coefficient there of 1 on V3 and a value of 3 on the constant side. The next one is V4 minus V1, so that's a coefficient of 1 on V4 and a coefficient of negative 1 on V1, and then that's equal to 3 volts again on the right hand side. That's our second equation. Then for the first KVL equation I have V1 over 4, so that's going to be 0.25 V1, is the only V1 term. Then for V2 I have negative uh, 0.25 here and negative 1 point, uh, 0.1429 for this. Um, adding that up it's going to be uh, negative 0.3929 to four digits. For V3 I'm going to have a negative a half so that'll be negative 0 0.5 and for V4 I've got 1 seventh, which is 0 0.1429 plus a half. So that's going to give me 0 0.6429, adding those together. And then the right hand side, when I bring the uh, 5 amps over to the right hand side, that becomes a negative 5. And of course, we're suppressing the units here as we enter these numbers. This does not include units. And for the last equation, then, I'm going to have uh, V1 has a just a coefficient of minus a quarter. So negative 0.25. The V2 term, I have 1 quarter plus a seventh. So that's 0.25 plus the uh, 0.1429 again. So 
as before, that's going to be 0.3929, except now it's a positive number here compared to the last equation. And V3 is absent here, so that'll have a 0. And V4 is negative uh, 1 7th, so that's negative 0 0.1429. And then bringing the 2 amps over to the right-hand side, the negative 2 amps becomes a positive 2 amps, so that'll be a 2. And now we'll check our equations there. And those are correct. And those are now uh, displayed on the screen. But the next thing we need to do is simply to enter those into a corresponding matrix equation. And that's very easy. We can just use the copy from simplified equations button so we don't have to retype all those numbers. So we've done that. And of course, that'll have to be correct now. And now our next step, basically, is to solve for the variables of interest. Now remember here, what we really need is V4 and V2, because those are the voltages across the 7 ohm resistor that is ultimately what we want to find. And we're going to do this by simple substitution. Um, it really doesn't make sense, I don't think, to do a, a Gaussian elimination when you have something like this, where you can do simple substitution. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do uh, substitution here instead. And remember that your instructor may want to see your handwritten solutions. That's up to them. They'll let, let you know if they want to have you turn that in. But it's always a good idea to write that out in a neat form uh, on paper anyway, just as practice uh, for your algebra. OK, so now we need to uh, do the algebra. So what I'm going to do here is simply copy these two uh, simplified KCL equations here. So I've got the 0.25V1 minus 0.3929V2 minus 0.5V3 plus 0.6429V4 equals negative 5. Um, that's the uh, equation here. And then the second equation is the negative 0.25V1 plus 0.3929V2 uh, minus 0.1429V4 equals 2. Um, those are the two KCL equations. And then the two voltage constraint equations for reference are the V3 equals 3 and V4 minus V1 equals 3. And I'm going to uh, eliminate the V4 in these equations. So I'll just solve that and say that's V4 equals 3 plus V1. So now the goal is to substitute these two uh, simple equations into the KVL, I'm sorry, KCL equations. And so this equation down here becomes 0.25V1 uh, minus 0.3929v2, and then I'll just put in the value of v3, which we know now is 0.5 times 3. And then um, here I have 0.6429v4, and substituting in v4 is 3 plus v1. The first part of that will be 0.6429 times the 3, and the second part will be plus 0.6429 times the v1. And that's still, of course, equal to negative 5. And then I can simplify that further now by collecting terms. So I now have 0.25v1. And over here, I have 0.6429v1. So adding those together on a calculator, um, or I can probably do that in my head, it's uh, 0.8929v1. Um, the v2 term just carries down. And the remaining terms now are all constants. So I'll bring the uh, 0 0.5 uh, times 3, which is, of course, 1 point negative 1.5 over to the right-hand side. So I have the original negative 5 plus that uh, 1.5. And then just multiplying uh, that out on the calculator, that's uh, point, uh, 1.9287. And then just adding up those three numbers again um, on a calculator or in your head uh, is negative 5.4287. And again, I'm trying to carry through um, some extra digits here just for the sake of accuracy. I really want it accurate to about three significant digits when I'm done, but it's always a good idea to have one or two extra digits um, in the calculations, but probably not more than that is necessary. Then I'm going to take my second uh, KVL equation, and sorry, KCL equation, and do the same substitutions here. So now I have negative uh, 0.25v1 and the 0.3929v2. Um, there is no v3 term here, but uh, now I substitute for v4 again as 3 plus v1. So that'll give me the negative 0.1429 times the 3. And then the second part of that will be negative 0.1429 times the v1. And that's still equal to 2 from this equation. And now I just, again, simplify this by combining terms. So now I have minus 0.25v1. Over here I have minus 0.1429v1. 
So just adding those up in your head, that's going to be negative 0.3929v1. And then still the v2 term carries down here. And then again, I will bring all the constants over the right-hand side. So I have the original 2, and then the plus 0.1429 times 3, that works out um, on a calculator to 0 0.4287. And uh, then just adding those together, of course, is easy. That's 2.4287. And so now I basically have um, these two equations, um, this equation here equal to that, and then this equal to this. And those are just two simultaneous equations in V1 and V2. So those are very easy to solve using elementary algebra. I don't think that matrix methods really are at all needed here. Um, you could do it if you wished, but uh, really just elementary algebra is perfectly sufficient to solve a two by two. So you could either solve one of these for one of the variables, such as v1, and then plug it into here, or vice versa, or solve for v2, however you want to do that. Um, what I've done is uh, just to combine the two equations. So I'm going to take um, this first equation and multiply it by 0.3929, which is this coefficient, divided by 0.8929. And when I do that, times this uh, equation here, the 0.8929v1 minus 0.3929v2 equals um, that negative 5.4287, of course, this will cancel out, giving me a plus 0.3929, which added to this then will make zero. So that's the goal here is to eliminate the V1 term, just to have V2, which as you remember, may remember is one of the things that we need over here to get the power. Um, so all we really have to do, we don't need to calculate that since that's obvious what that will be. Um, we just do the multiplication here, which you can easily do on a calculator. Um, so you have the 0.3929 times uh, the same thing basically uh, with a negative sign divided by 0.8929 and then add on to that the 0.3929 and when you do that that gives us uh, 0.2200v2 and then do the same thing for this constant term multiplied by this ratio which you probably could pre-compute I guess to make this a little easier um, and then add that to the 2.4287 and when you do that it comes out to 0.0399 now you might notice here that we have quite a bit of cancellation um, in terms of these two, and so that has the potential to introduce round-off error. And that's one of the reasons that we want to make sure we have an extra digit or two, um, because in this case, uh, subtracting two uh, nearly equal numbers did in fact uh, eliminate some of the significant digits, and that is a hazard. Um, and you have to be careful, and if necessary, you might actually have to carry it out to even more digits if you're getting a lot of round-off error to make sure you have an accurate answer. So do be um, alert to <clears throat> issues that can give you round off error. Okay, so now we just have a simple, <clears throat> excuse me, equation for V2. We just divide uh, 0.0399 by 0.22, and that'll give us 0.1815, which as it turns out is not exact in the fourth digit, but that'll be close enough um, to be accepted. So we now have V2, and then we'll just back substitute um, into one of these equations um, to get V1, and so uh, I'll just happen to observe that this equation, these are the same coefficients, just negatives. And so I could divide both sides of this equation by 0.3929 just to make this easier and have negative V1 plus V2 is equal to this divided by the 0.3929, which on a calculator that will give you 6.181. And then I can just uh, solve directly for V1. It's going to be uh, bring the V1 over here, bring the 6.181 over here. So I have V1 is equal to v2 minus that constant. And then just substitute in this value, subtract the 6.181, and that turns out to be um, very accurately negative 6.0 volts. And then uh, we already know v3 is 3, and then um, v4 we can find very easily from this formula. So we just add 3 to v1, and of course that we can do in our head is just negative 3.0 volts. So now we have um, these values, and we'll go back here to uh, put those into the form. And uh, just to save time here, I'll do that. But uh, basically, the V1 is the negative 6. V2 is the 0.18. Uh, uh, well, actually, what I computed was 0815. And then the 3 and the negative 3. We'll check that. And that is within the required accuracy. So now, now, the last step here is to compute the dissipated power. This is where we're going to use the SOT variable equation. So we, now we just take our values of V2 and V4, which are reproduced down here. 
um, subtract those on a, a calculator, um, and then square that, divide that by 7, and that will give us, after doing that calculation, that'll be 1.446 approximately. Um, maybe actually it'll be a little different using the numbers I put in, but it'll be close to that. And we'll check the answer there. And that is correct. So that basically completes this problem.